Hey guys, Mark here. Today we're going to talk about some missing feature in our favorite Affinity Designer. I was early adapter, so I bought this software quite early, just after it was released to public. And at that point, I think it was a really great deal for the price of a video game. You can buy professional graphic software. It's allowed me to cancel my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, so I save hundreds of dollars in the context of what four years now so that's great i love this software but there are still some missing features and it's always hard almost hard, hard to believe that in 2022 so many years after the initial release they still didn't add them into our toolbar so let's talk about missing features and also how we can work around them how we can find a solution all right so we've been waiting for Auto trace since the beginning, so that was the very very first missing feature. Day one, people already start complaining, asking on the forum about auto trace. In my case, it was never part of my workflow, so I didn't care about this at all. But I think now more than ever, it's important feature for vector editing software. Many people nowadays they work on iPads, they love to digital paint, digital draw, the initial concept for the art. And some of them like to turn that raster sketch into vector and work from there. So for them, this is kind of essential feature. So if you like to work, let's say in Procreate and then turn this into vectors easily and then continue from there, you cannot do it here in Affinity Designer. And it's quite sad because they are targeting people with iPads, iPads Pro. They got great app for iPad, right? And same time, people that are working already on iPad on Procreate, they cannot really move to Affinity Designer easily because of this one feature is missing. So that's quite poor decision in my opinion on their side. And funny enough, we got alternative software that can do it. And teams behind Vectornator or Gravit Designer that got Auto Trace feature, they're much smaller. So. If you need auto trace, you can one, you can use Vectornator. It's free to download. You can use this. You can trace your art into SVG and then you can send this SVG to Affinity Designer. That's one way around. Same thing with Gravit Designer. Gravit Designer is free, web based app, so it's launched directly in a web browser without installation. Load your JPEG, turn into vectors, send vector file to your Affinity Designer and continue from there. There are also websites, websites that can help you to convert JPEG to SVG as well. So there are like multiple options to auto trace nowadays. As I mentioned, websites, Vectornator and Gravit Designer are just three options for you. And then you can continue working on that trace vector graphics in Affinity Designer. I don't understand why they still, after so many years, didn't add this feature. All right, so we got this out of the way, auto trace, and the second most important feature that is still missing is wrap tool, envelope tool. So uh, sometimes I see some uh, begging users on our forum and stuff like that asking about, okay, how I can find this tool in Affinity Designer because they kind of assume it's there because it's su such an essential tool now, right? You got text, you got shape, you can wrap the text into the shape or other way around important when you design some kind of logos, text for t-shirts and stuff like that. And it's missing. We don't have any form of wrap tool in Affinity Designer right now. Only thing you can do is, let's say, let's type something. You got a text like hello. And one thing you can do, if you wanna just simply make it like curvy or something like that, you can of course put this on the curve. So we can draw the curve like this first. Then we can use text tool, hover our mouse on the edge, click on it, and then you can type on the curve. Okay, that's one thing you can do. So this is not actually wrapping the text, but putting text to the path. But in some cases, this can help you out. And if you really need to wrap the text, like in those examples here, only thing you can do is to draw the shape to help yourself first. So we draw the shape and then we use other tools to like, let's say, make some 
modification. So let's say you want to wrap inside. So you draw the shape like this and you cannot wrap this automatically. So only thing you can do is to kind of reposition your text above the shape and then you convert your text to curves. So you will transform your text to be a just a normal vector shape like I just did. I can ungroup now. And you must actually now go and manually adjust each letter to this guiding shape you draw before. And this way you can kind of have, let's say, similar experience to wrapping, but it's a lot of manual job and it's required some knowledge about pen tool and other tools. So yeah, this feature is still missing right now. And I think this one is even more important than, than our auto trace that I mentioned before. This is kind of essential tool for many, many people. So it's still missing and there's no really a good walk around this other than just manual work. All right, our missing feature number three is knife tool. Knife tool is used to cut to the shape. So for example, you draw a nice hard shape and now you want to divide it into two pieces. And let's say in Adobe Illustrator, you can pick the knife and you can cut through, you got two separate shapes. That's missing here. We don't have anything like knife tool, but that's not a big problem because we can do something very, very similar using additional shapes. So instead of, we can, let's say you pick, uh, the most similar experience will be with pencil tool, right? So we got pencil tool because this is hand freehand tool. So we go freehand around like this. Okay, we got this line now. Let's change the color so we are not confused to the red, red. All right. And now we want to close this line. You can close line draw by pencil tool quickly by clicking add action on our functions here. Add. All right. And now I will simply make two copies of this. So I will duplicate this thing here. And for the first copy, I will subtract. And for the second copy, I will intersect. And this way we kind of cut through the shape using Pencil tool, other way of doing that without making copies and all of that. Let me do it one more time before someone call me in the comment section below. So I can also take this line. I can turn this line into normal shape. So expand my stroke. And now I simply subtract this stroke. And then we divide. This is even faster. So you can Use pencil tool first, draw the line, close the shape nicely. You don't even need to close the shape, to be honest, if you're going to turn this line into shape later on. So then draw the line, expand the stroke and subtract this line from the design. And that's your knife tool in general. So that's actually not big miss. This is super easy to walk around knife tool. Some people make big deal of this. Just use pencil tool, expand and Subtract and you are done with the knife effect like this. All right, what do we have here? Shape builder, yeah, shape builder. This is a little bit like a driving car with the shift stick. So if you are old school design <laughs> veteran from freehand or Inkscape, coil draw, stuff like that, for you will be not a big deal because you know all the all process between steps in shape builder. You can recreate that manually. People that learn building shapes with this tool in Adobe Illustrator, they will miss that. So what Shape Builder do is you draw your shapes like this and then you can kind of select. Okay, cut this out, add this to this very quickly. Without this, we need to do it manually. So you can of course select shapes and use Boolean functions here and keep adding them manually. You can cut out the shape to make a hole and stuff like that. And at the end, you are able to achieve same result like with shape tool, shape builder tool. So that's very handy tool to have, but you can walk your, walk your way around this. 
and I got like few more videos all about building shapes. So you can check this out on my channel. I got some videos when we just using different tools in Affinity Designer to build shapes. All right, so shape builder tool is missing, but we can use other tools to build our shapes here, not a big problem. And the last thing is vector eraser tool. This is something people keep mentioning in forums and stuff like that. And this vector eraser tool is very similar tool to, I would say knife tool. So we can supplement this in the very similar manner. So if you're going to use pencil, but with, sorry, let's deselect this shape, pencil, but with quite big width of the stroke like this, this is like your eraser tool. So you adjust your width first, you can make it large and then you can use that to draw above your shape first and then as I showed you before, let's turn this stroke into path, so expand stroke and then you can use that to subtract. And this is almost same way as you will be doing vector erasing. Of course, you got those additional steps in between that you need to expand, subtract, stuff like that. So it's kind of confusing for really beginners, but it's something we can walk around easily. So vector eraser is missing, but we can walk around that quite easily. Same with shape builder, same with knife tool. And those first and the second one is the biggest trouble for everybody right now. Auto trace is still missing. You can send your artwork to Vectornator, Gravit Designer, or using some websites that can convert your raster art into Vector1 and then load that to Affinity Designer. So that's the way around. And this is the biggest problem, at least for me. Wrap tool is still missing and to work around this is really a pain. All right, guys. So today, a little bit more about complaining, not <laughs> tutorial. So Thank you for watching and if you want to learn more about Affinity Designer, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!